Hello, my name is Michael Kaler, and I am the lab manager for the Gyme Diffraction Facility, located at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Here, we have 23 data sets that were collected at different temperatures, and I want to refine them to get lattice parameters. This would be tedious and time-consuming to individually refine each data set and copy the lattice parameters to an Excel file, but I am able to do all of this with the click of one button. Let me start by clicking the Analyze View tab here. That way we can see the refinements for each of the data sets as they occur. And then I will click this YouTube HT XRD button that I've created. I will also right click, show graphics and difference plot. And now it will go through and refine each of these data sets. I'm going to speed this video up to save some time and keep you from getting too bored. While we wait for the refinement to complete, let me take this opportunity to ask you to please like, comment, and or subscribe to our channel if this video or any of our other videos have proven useful. If you can do any of these things, it greatly helps us out. Now that refinements are complete, it will create a new Excel file and populate it with all of the refinement parameters. We see that we have all 23 samples here. If we make these columns a little bit bigger, we see that we have temperature and corundum lattice parameter A. We can left click and highlight both columns, insert a scatter plot, I'll do this one, and there we have our lattice parameters plotted as a function of temperature within just four minutes. You can see how this greatly reduces the amount of time and work that you need to spend analyzing your data. Let's go back to high score and see how we set all of this up. Let's start from the beginning. We'll go to File, open our first data set. So I will choose room temperature. I will then insert all of my other data sets. So I will left click, shift on the keyboard, left click again, open. And there we see all of our patterns and how the peak moves from left to right as a function of temperature. I will right click, zoom out, go to analyze view so that we can start analyzing the data. Now I'm going to quickly go over the steps for phase identification and setting up a refinement. If you are unfamiliar with these processes, I suggest you go back and watch our phase identification and or phase quantification videos, which I will link down below. And the phase quantification video will be linked at the top right of the screen as well. I'm going to go through this process a little bit more quickly than I do in the other videos and skip a couple of steps because this is a very simple pattern. So I'm going to right click, search match, edit the restriction set, I know what this is for sure. This is aluminum oxide. I'm positive of it, so I'm going to say that both aluminum and oxygen must be in any patterns that I find. If I wasn't sure that it was aluminum oxide, maybe it was just aluminum, I would leave it gray or light blue. But I know that it's aluminum oxide, so I will make them both green. I will add rest to none of. I'm going to come over here to quality. And again, because this is a very simple and common pattern, I'm going to choose to only find star quality patterns, which are the highest quality patterns you can get. You can skip this step if you want to. If your phase only has a couple of patterns in the database, then clicking this star button here might skip them and you might not find anything. I would definitely recommend clicking skip patterns without structure data though, because if you use any patterns without structured data, then you cannot refine them, which negates the whole purpose of this video. 
so I highly recommend this button, at least for this application. I will close and search. Click OK. I will left click on my first phase here that pops up and I see that the peaks all match very nicely with my data. So I will left click and drag it up, right click, and then convert pattern to phase. At this point, you can come into refinement control and set it up however you like, as you can see in my other videos. You can left click global variables, come down here and calculate errors. You could make the solver tolerance a little more demanding if you want. At this point too, if you were going to try to get crystallite size and a micro strain, you could left click on the phase scroll down here and choose size strain of whatever you like for instance size and strain if you are going to do it this way remember that you also need an instrumental parameter file but you can learn all about that in my size strain analysis video which i will link at the top right of the screen now but for this video i'm just going to keep that none And that will be enough for setting up refinement for this application. Come back here to the pattern list. For the batch process you saw me run, we need two things. The first is some sort of refinement strategy saved as a parameter set. And these are your parameter sets for refinement strategies. I believe default refilled comes pre-installed with Highscore Plus but you can also make other refinement strategies, such as this one that I made, Expanded Refilled, and this includes refinement of preferred orientation. If you would like to learn how to set up your own refinement strategies and save them, you can click the link at the top right of your screen for my parameter set tutorial video. Once you have one of these that you want to use for refinement, then the next thing that you need is a user script. And a user script is what allows Highscore Plus to output all of your results to Excel. If you go to Tools, you should see this script editor. Left click that. And under Modules on the right side of the screen, you should see a number of scripts. Some of these come pre installed with Highscore Plus. Some of these I modified myself to fit whatever application I was looking at. So the one I use most is likely this one here. It stands for lattice parameters, phase quantification, crystallite size, and micro strain. So when this script runs, it will export all of this information to your Excel file. Just to make it clear, you will only get crystallite size and micro strain if you are performing size strain analyses. We are not in this video, so we won't get those values. Here we see the script. It is written in Object Pascal. It's not a long script, and it's not overly complicated. I will be the first to admit that I am not a professional programmer, so maybe this is not the most efficient way of writing the script, but if you want the script in order to modify it yourself, you are welcome to do so. I will load it to our website, and you can find the link for that in the description below. If you do go to the website and download the script in a text file format, you can just open the text file, click Control A on the keyboard, Control C to copy it. You will want to come over here and click this button, choose New Script, give it some name. I'm just going to call this one YouTube. Highlight that, Control V on the keyboard to paste, and then just come up here to the program line, and I would give that the same name that you named it up here. So for me, that will be YouTube. And then save it, left click. Now we have our script, but even though we have this script, we need to save it as a parameter file. 
to do that, we go to, let's see, Customize, Edit Parameter Sets, and then we need to scroll down and find the User Script line. Double click. You can give it a description if you like. I'm just going to call it YouTube Example. You can select the script that you want. That will be the one that we just made, YouTube. And then save it with some parameter set name. I will call this, well, there you go, YouTube Example. I already had one made. I will click OK. Because I already had it made, it asks me if I want to overwrite it. I do. So now our parameter set is saved. I will close and close. And now we have the two pieces that we need for our batch process. I will go to Customize, Edit User Batches. I will create a new batch. I'm going to call this YouTube Example. If you want to copy the items from an already existing batch process, you can choose it from here, or you can just choose an empty batch to start fresh. Again, you can give it some sort of description if you like. Enter. We see that the batch is empty, and here on the left-hand side, we have all of the things that we can enter into the batch. I'm going to scroll down and find the automatic fitting steps Click the plus sign. And then at this point, you would choose whichever refinement strategy you want to use. Left click it, and then insert. I will then left click here. Left click next to user script. And then I will choose the user script that we just saved. Insert it, and now we see it as step two. We are almost done. The last thing we need to look at is this bottom section. And we have some options that we can click. If we click here, next to apply this batch on all data sets of the document, that simply means that each scan in the scan list, or each data set, will have these steps applied to it. We definitely want this, at least for this example, because we want each temperature to get refined. If we click this button next to Use Reference Patterns from Anchor Dataset, what that will do is that it will take this reference pattern from our first dataset and it will copy it to all of our other datasets, which is nice when we are going through and looking at the datasets individually. We have this structured data source, and this is a little difficult to explain, but let me click OK for now. We see that once we do that, we get the YouTube example button down here. Let me go to scan list, and then let me go back to that edit user batches. So here, if we use structured data source from initial anchor data set, that means that the starting values for all of the refinable parameters in your data sets will come from the first data set. So the program will refine this data set. It will result in refined lattice parameters, structure factors, stuff like that. And then it will use those values as starting values in all of these other data sets. Now, if you choose last used anchor data set, that means that it will refine this data set it will use those refined values as starting values for this data set. And then it will refine those values. And then once we move on to this data set, it will use the refined values from data set 2 as starting values for data set 3. And then for data set 4, it will use the data set 3 refined values as starting values. So that's the difference there. And I like to use this option the last used anchor dataset option 
when performing these batch processes on thermal expansion experiments, where we are basically just looking at peak shifts caused by changing lattice parameters. It's a very gradual process, so that's when we like to use this option. We have another option here, none. What that means is that, for example, if we were refining on dataset 13, it would not use any refined variables or any refined values from any of these scans as starting values. It will simply take the reference pattern in the pattern list, convert it to a phase, and then begin refining on just the standard starting values. So what that means is that all of these refinements will be performed using the very same starting values. But for high temperature thermal expansion experiments, I'm just going to use last used anchored data set. Finally, down here on allowed data set types, I don't really change that. I just leave them all as allowed. And then once you're all done, just click OK. Like I showed you before, the button should show up wherever your batch toolbar is. If you don't see that toolbar anywhere on your screen, you can right click and choose batches toolbar. You'll see that if I choose that now, if I left click, the toolbar goes away. But if I right click and choose it again, it appears. That is it for this video. I have two more videos on batch processes that I will link in the description below. Both videos deal with data sets that contain different phases. One video shows you how to perform batch phase identification, including background determination, peak searching, and search matching. The other video shows you how to perform a search match and refill refinement and then export it to Excel. If those sound interesting or helpful, make sure to check them out. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.